Hello everyone, Ventura here with the last update for my Cassian Creed DD Inquis guy. He is now level 100 and <clears throat> he is in a state where I consider him complete. Obviously, you can upgrade it much further and I will also include examples of that in the description with uh, PoE Dance, the man himself, uh, hardcore version and a Rutus uh, softcore version of the build. Both of them actually are very stronger defensively, especially against elemental damage compared to my build. But I didn't want to do the whole incandescent setup with max stress shield because I just thought the shield crafting would be too annoying and I wanted to just get the build done and functional as fast as possible. So I opted out of that. But even with that, my build was more than tanky enough to do all content, all tier 17s, all ubers. You will see some showcase of that at the very end of this video as well. Keep in mind that uh, there's a lot of ways to build this build and none of them is better or worse than the others. They all have trade-offs and you should probably build it in a way that uh, supplements your playstyle the most. So for example, if you're gonna do ubers, you should definitely go for the incandescent Sibakwa setup because there's a lot of pen on ubers, right? But if you are just mapping, getting my fizz DR setup is pretty good. So it really depends on uh, what your goals are with the build and uh, what you want to do in terms of how you build the character. So let's take a look at how the character ended. We got uh, <coughs> this fall from Necropolis Crafting. I already had this in the last video. I basically just uh, Necropolis Crafted. I have a full video on how to craft certain items. You could go for the fire damage on here uh, with Veld Orbs, but it's just too expensive. So I decided to opt out of it. It's like one in 10 and it's like six diff per try or something now. So nah, not for me. Shield, I tried to synthesize it since last time. We missed, but I'll just highlight the element avoidance again. That is uh, one difference that I have over the other versions of Custom Crit DD that I saw that I'm actually element immune. I mean, I'm sure you could uh, implement it into the Adorn versions and like you get a lot of uh, element reduction from Adorn if you actually corrupt the jewels, but it's just difficult to do early on. So I really like my element avoidance setup. I'm pretty much go for element immunity on every build just because, I mean, I can't be bothered dealing with elements. That's pretty much it. Obviously, Yoke, most insane amulet, not really negotiable. Always play Oak. Death Rush. Honest, for mapping, Defresh is the way. I, I feel like I can't play without Defresh. It gives you Fizz DR, it gives you life on kill, it gives you speed. It's perfect. Again, Polaric Devastation, I will mention it one more time. A little overrated, but it still finds a spot in the endgame version of the build. So you can use like any ring before that. It doesn't really matter. It's just the extra damage endgame. And as I said before, it only adds up to like 10-12% damage. It's not actually 20 since we have a lot of increased damage from Yoke and Shock, so... I went for a big Fizz defense on my body armor. I went for the Fizz reduction on Suffix and Gravish's Craft on Prefix with Determination and Aura Effect. This basically meant that I never really died to Fizz and I could tank even some uh, Uber Fizz damage, including a low row Shaper Slams and whatnot, so I will take it. I feel like uh, for low budget, when your shield doesn't have max stress or max chaos stress, going for a rare chest kind of makes sense, more sense than incandescent heart, but incandescent heart gives you damage, so it's kind of hard to compete. They are both really good. As I said, there's no better or worse, but the endgame version with incandescent is definitely way, way stronger against elemental damage, especially in Ubers. Uh, boots. I finished my element avoidance cap, otherwise brittle on the implicit. Once I don't kill, I switch, I still switch to silver flask for bossing, but uh, for mapping I dropped it for jade, you could also drop it for quartz, because I know a lot of people were complaining about no phasing on this build, which I personally didn't find problematic, but when I first started playing the build it was a little annoying, so yeah, I can understand that for sure. Uh, Fire leech on gloves with uh, some other implicit like damage per frenzy, damage per power charge doesn't really matter. Nothing too special. And belt uh, is cooldown recovery with a cooldown recovery jewel. So we have awakened cast on crit level five with uh, plus three gems from the skill tree uh, from crit mastery right here. Actually, this one. So that gives us thirty one percent CDR, and this belt gives us the other twenty one we need to hit the fifty two threshold. I will repeat this one more time. Um, the way you should look at CDR is either you get 14 or 52. Anything in between doesn't matter at all. That's absolutely nothing. 
So keep that in mind when you're making your build. And uh, most of the time, actually all the time, if you don't have a vacant cast on crit, don't even bother going for 52. This is a vacant cast on crit only, and I understand it's expensive. I'm not sure what the price is actually now. Let me double check here. It shows us 40 diff. I don't know if that's accurate. It is an expensive upgrade, but it is about 25%, 30% more damage. So you should try to get it eventually. It's a, it's a fun little grind to go for. But the build is completely capable of killing like all tier 17s, so even ubers without uh without awaken cast on crit so if you cannot afford it and you're like oh i will never be able to afford it that shouldn't like dissuade you from playing the build uh my helmet has some fist mitigation again uh fist taking us fire coral craft and fist taking us cold implicit uh it doesn't really matter whether you have cold fire lightning because we have the same defense for all of them and we are immune to elements so we don't really care about what it inflicts to us and that is the gear overview uh next i decided to go for one cluster uh this cluster is better than the mana cluster the mana cluster just adds extra cost to your divine blessing so if you're only gonna play one just take projectile damage even though there's nothing unless you need the mana for vitality level because sometimes you don't have enough mana to actually get level 20 or 21 vitality so that is an option i have a few tattoos that i want to talk about uh this one is just move speed because i had uh, i had enough decks to drop it i have chance to blind I don't think this is super important, but I mean, it's better than nothing. And uh, it will help on some bosses and might as well get it. I think one that, like one dex point for it is super worth it. Chance to poison and chance to bleed for all the orc damage. One is on end node, one is on strength node. These are absolutely mandatory. You will have them for sure. I have a bunch of lightning rest nodes here just to overcap my lightning rest a little bit. And then chaos rest to make it 75. Because uh, my end was already higher than my strength, so losing the end didn't actually make me lose anything except a very little bit of ES. So I figured might as well tattoo it. If my strength was higher and uh, losing end would mean I would be losing crit from uh, Righteous Providence, I just wouldn't use the tattoos and I would play with like 69 kills rest. But since my strength was lower, I could actually afford to lose the end on the on the top passives there. Well, four passives in total, actually. Uh, we play Mind Over Matter on the setup because we are not playing uh, Divine Flash Sibak Jewel. So we still use the ES as, an e as our HP pool. So we have like 6.3k in total, which is pretty similar to the Adorn setups. One thing I will mention that I haven't seen people really do enough is you can drop increased crit damage support for a vacant NKOE. And you can also play Orias and if you feel like your clear is lacking, it shouldn't lag with uh, a vacant NKOE, but it's something to keep in mind if you want to try it out. It's only like 9 div or something, so... It might be a decent option to try out, and if you don't like it, you should be able to resell it. Oh, one thing I will mention, I didn't end up opting for Red Dream at all. I went for... I just kept Enduring Cry the entire time, and I've seen people just keeping Enduring Cry the entire time. And I prefer it way over just switching to Infernal Cry since uh, we run Polar Devastation Endgame anyways, and even if we weren't, Infernal Cry is only like 6 or 7% damage, so it feels like it doesn't matter. Uh, the other jewels I have is Ancestor Vision to give me the other 50% uh, avoid elements in co uh, combination with my boots and uh, shield to get 100. Uh, then uh, I have Fist DR Determination with Regen Vitality, nothing too special but solid. I think I paid like 6D or something which is like pretty good for two mod watchers. Definitely wasn't upset about that. Uh, obviously the Vitality life gain on hit is really insane on this bow since we hit like legit 50 times a second or more. I didn't want to pay that much. And I don't feel like I needed it because I wasn't really dying on this build. I ended up getting a few deaths on uh, some of the tier 17s when I rolled them too hard and on Ubers when I misplayed. But realistically, I still did, I think, five Ubers deathless on the first try. Four or five. And I killed all the Ubers first try without any issues. It's just on some of them, I, I, I made a little mistake here and there. But honestly, it was completely fine. Also, all the tier 17 is completely fine. Again, there will be a showcase there at the end. And uh, let's check out the POB. Just to show some numbers real quick. And that's going to be it. Except I will also show POB of other versions of the build. So let's start with my POB, Inquis DD Final. So we can see we have 27 mil DPS. But you should also add the spell component. So it adds extra 4 mil. Not a big deal, but uh, it's something that I don't usually mention since it's only like extra 10-15% damage. This build is basically 30 mil DPS on this gear level. 
Which is acceptable, especially for this level of defenses. Like, my defense is pretty good. My fist defense is very solid. My elemental defense is a little weaker than the other versions I will show you, but uh, it's it's still good enough. Um, I made a full uh, video on how to set up your POB in case your POB isn't working properly. Figured I would mention that because I've seen a lot of people have issues with that. So make sure to check it out if, in case you have like any issues or questions on how to set up the POB. Uh, I'm just going to double check. Yeah, this is all correct. So yeah, about 30 mil on my character, decent max hit. I know this is with Molten Child, but even then, even without Molten Child, we still have 25k max fizz hit, which is very, very solid on this budget. Uh, elemental max hit, again, you can solve it by going Incandescent and uh, Maxter's Shield with uh, Divine Flash the Bakwa Jewel, but up to you what you prefer. Now that we saw my version of the build, let's, uh, you know, let's look at P.O.E. Dan, the man himself. And this is the most disgusting skill tree ever, and this is the reason why I dislike Adorned. Four clusters, pretty much don't pick up any node on the skill tree, except the clusters and jewels. This is how his build looks. It's not too different, honestly. It's just better in terms of uh, efficiency from Adorned. So you can see, his fizz hit is not really much higher than mine, but his elemental hit is a lot higher, right? But he's also higher investment, he's using a 145 Adorn, and his shield is really insane. So, I feel like considering my investment, my build is very good, and especially for softcore, I would consider it good enough. DPS-wise, he's pretty similar to what I had, slightly higher, about, I don't know, 10-15%. I can do math right now. Actually, almost 20. Uh, what I wanna highlight about his build though, except the Adorn part, is he actually goes for deep breaths with uh, Warcry have minimum power, and then he goes for a Warcraft cluster with uh, extra armor and onslaught. And uh, his goal is to basically have permanent onslaught from clusters and have extra armor from uh, this node as well. And his endurance charges are a lot more consistent even if there are not no mobs around him. So it is a hardcore version and uh, you know, it's PoE Dan build. It, it can't really be wrong. But uh, I just wanted to show how disgusting Adorn can be and what it does to skill trees. I really wish uh, this jewel was adjusted a bit. I don't like what it does to the game. But while it's there, if you want to make a strong character, you should use it. That's what it is. And then uh, one quick look at the Roos character. He's also playing um, in Gendeson. But what I wanted to highlight here... He actually, uh, you know, justified my point about uh, Polaric Devastation. He doesn't even use it. So even in an endgame version, he doesn't use Polaric Devastation. He might be swapping it with Deathrite for single target or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, he's also playing Adorn version, but he way less extreme than uh, Dan's version. He only has two clusters and uh, his damage is actually similar to mine. But his defenses for Elemental, again, are a lot higher. His fist is a little lower than mine, if I remember correctly, and uh, otherwise, it's pretty similar. He, I think he has 88 chaos stress. yeah, he doesn't have 90. Pretty sure Dan had 90, because his uh, his Legion Jewel had extra plus 2 chaos stress, so that's how he got it. But yeah, uh, I recommend uh, checking those builds for yourself, if you wanna check out uh, like the differences between the builds. And uh, I will make sure to link both of the... Ruse and Dan's builds in the description for like already set up POBs so we can just do a quick comparison. Otherwise, uh, Ruse gear doesn't seem to be too extreme. I just want to check how he actually got his uh, CDR to 52. He just used the belt plus uh, boots. Unlike me who I just used the belt at Joel because I needed the implicit on boots uh, for the element avoidance. But otherwise, his belt is actually pretty similar to mine except uh, different shield and uh, different body armor. I actually kind of like what he did here. He sacrificed some uh, some damage on the shield to get the Fizz DR. And probably would assume that the Max uh, Fracture was cheaper on an armored shield. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's how he solved the mitigation issues that uh, Incandescent builds can sometimes can have. So yeah. I mean, overall, pretty good build. Doesn't really matter which version you play. There's a lot of content about this build on my channel. If you want to check it out, if you want to check out Drew's channel, I think he is going to be making a Magebot version too, at least in POB. I'm not sure if he's going to play it as well. And, uh, you know, you can keep tabs on Dan. And there's a lot of other people playing this build, but those would be the people I wanted to highlight personally. And I think that's it for this build. 
And we are already on to the next one. I actually have a uh, next build already leveled, so you can look forward for updates for that one. I mean, it might be 97 because we did a lot of sh a little, little bit of shrine abusing. But uh, yeah, as the command, that I is the next build. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these little build reviews and the builds, because I'm going to be doing at least 19 builds, one for each ascendancy during this week. And I want to keep uh, posting the regular updates. So don't miss them, don't miss out on them. But I'm done yapping. Enjoy the showcases of the Inquis guy. And I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone. Have a good one. Okay, so we have to deal with Maven heal. Should be fine. Oh yeah, I have Arcanist Brand. I forgot that I, I want to use it on single target. Why is she just casting? It doesn't. She usually doesn't cast that much. Oh, you get the mark for death thingy on this boss fight. That's so annoying. I forgot about that. I forgot that you get it on killing uniques too. Even with Maven heal, she dies really fast, though. Okay, that was a little sketchy because of the Mark for Dead debuff, but in general, that was fine. Okay, Abomination fight. I like killing Chevron first, but on this build, it honestly doesn't matter that much. I still think killing the other last is the best if you can do that. Cosmetic and Karnas Brand. Okay, I mean, these bosses are, like, super easy on this build. When you have this level of gear, right? Okay, Katarina time. This is, I think, the hardest boss. This build is actually better for this than Hexblast, though. I'm pretty sure, because I'm way tankier than Hexblast was. Damn, the damage actually feels so good. Admittedly, this map doesn't really have defense mods, but still. I could actually farm Katarina on this build and not feel bad about it. On Hexblast, it was the only boss that was actually somewhat painful. Oh, the region is so nice here too. Oh yeah, I can just tank that slam. I don't need to dodge it. If I don't jump around, there's no way it kills me. I have so much with DR. Okay, last Lich. This one's pretty easy. As long as you survive the second Lich, this fight is basically free. I should be using Arcanist Brain more, I'm just not used to it. But it's also not really needed. Okay, I could definitely farm this boss a lot more on this build, it's, it's nice. Plus two frags. Okay, boss time. This is the easiest boss by far. Especially on a range build. He just doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm gonna cancel the Divine Shrine out. Divine Shrine is a little cheaty. Just a little bit. Oh, I can outrun that. <laughs> I like how we have the, the army, man. We have Einar, we have Hug. Touch this. Try to face him. He's faced already. Like the endgame version of this build just doesn't struggle with tier 17 at all, but 
I was doing the fights even on uh, lower gear level and it was still completely fine. Like the day, like the second update POV was like completely fine against Ubers without like awakening cards on crit and whatnot. Like the second you get Yoke, you have like way more damage than you will ever need. And even without Yoke, it's doable, but then like it's just unnecessary to farm them without Yoke. Let's see how this goes. So I have Ruby Flask on 5. That feels very unnatural. But I'm sure I can handle it. Oops. I got stuck there. Okay, let's start hitting the dog a little bit. Why am I just eating these balls? I thought I would make it out of there in time. I'm dash. Whoops. Oh my god. Why am I the worst player to ever exist? At least with Ruby Flask, you don't have to be good. Oh no, not the back to back. I'll have one use of the flask. I killed the dog really fast now. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Maybe that's the strat. Maybe you just pop the flask at the start. You focus on the dog. And then when the dog is dead, you just focus on dodging the balls. Yeah, that's definitely the play actually. Dude, he just spams it. I don't have Ruby Fast at all. I have one use. Let's use it here. I wish I rolled increased duration on my prefix. Okay, that wasn't too bad, honestly. <clears throat> the first ball phase was really bad, but the second and third actually went kinda okay. I'm happy with that. I don't think I can commit. Oh, we got it. And we got a staff. GG. Okay, Cortex time. This build is dumb on Cortex. Or it should be dumb on Cortex. Just because of how corpses work in this zone. I did not even check the map mods on this. I probably should have. Oh, it's dead. Uh, Endurance charge, Frenzy charge, Resist, Pen. Not too bad. I'll check the boots in a sec. Um, I would just keep this. It's 30 MS, I would just keep this. I wouldn't try again. Really? I made myself a rule. I don't delete any YouTube comments ever, unless it's like profanity stuff. Like, just because someone disagrees with me or didn't have a good experience playing my ball, just, like, whatever. I mean, there's enough people who have a positive experience to outweigh that anyway, so I don't need to really hide anything. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, sure, there's always gonna be people who don't have a good experience with your build or whatever. But, I mean, if your build is good, there's gonna be so many people with positive experience that it doesn't really matter. I actually got like an insane amount of positive comments over the last two weeks and I'm really glad for that. Okay, last phase. As I said, Cortex is like super easy for this build. It's like insane. You just have infinite damage in here. I wish it was this damage on every boss, but... Let's see. Give me Joel. Joel, 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 Joel. Maybe? Why does it take so long? <laughs> oh, is this good? It's pretty diff. I mean, it's okay. I don't take that. That's not too bad. I, I think I like broke even.
Image and us are actually kind of decent. This is going a lot faster than I expected, especially since I'm not even keeping a brittle. But it's hard to keep a brittle on this fight. And I have one fast cues. And he's dead? No, dude, really? I think that a little wrong, but we survived. Oh, or I sent. Please be expensive. Oh, it's only nine, Dave. Still cool, still cool. We, we take those, we take those. 